Hi everybody, welcome to Big Oggy Golf. Now, today I thought we'd start a new series of videos here on the channel. These will be videos where I showcase or Neil showcases products that uh, arrive here at the Big Oggy Golf house, um, where I create videos with my wife Kelly for Big Oggy Golf and Big Oggy World. Now, sometimes there'll be products that I've purchased myself. Sometimes there'll be ones that Neil or the Buccaneers have purchased and said, you know, Oggy, come and take a look at this. Sometimes there'll be items that get sent to us. Now, we've just had a new rangefinder sent to us from the Chinese rangefinder company, Malzi. Now, if you've watched our program before here, our channel before, you will know we have done two or three actual reviews for different Malzi rangefinder products. Uh, and we love them. I mean, we really do. So much so that currently I am using the PF1, which is the little uh, waterproof one, which was, if I remember rightly, done a review with by Steve and Alfie Treby for me. And uh, Neil, Neil is using the uh, Marcy PF260 on the channel at the moment. He likes that one because of the magnetic fixing that goes onto our buggy. So both Neil and I have Marzi rangefinders in our bag right now. So a couple of weeks ago, this arrived through the post. This is the Marzi PFS2. PFS2. Now, this is one of their premium rangefinders. This has to be up around their top of the price rangefinders that they create. This one is a pre-production one. So we've done the, the showcase using this. And there are some functions that we don't have featuring on this, but we will be doing a full in-depth showcase of this product when we get the new one arriving through the door. But they are now already available in the shops. Still a great product, okay? So, first of all, let's pop over to Neil for the unboxing. The FS2. Oh, nice little box slide. Here we go. Nice, solid looking case. Marcy logo, and you've also got a little attachment loop there for your carabiner clip. Speaking of which, also in the box, your carabiner clip. Instruction manual, little lens cleaning cloth. They do come with two batteries. You've got one already in the unit. So you get a spare, quite handy to keep in the golf bag just in case you need it. So you've got weatherproof zipping on there. Quite hardly if you get caught out in any rain. And the main unit itself. Okay. The FS2. So you've got a very texturized rubber. You've got the yellow plastic. Does look quite swish. Gold and black, yellow and black, Cornish colours. I like it. The little hoops here that I believe you could put a little lanyard for like a wrist holder. So Stops you dropping it, go out on the course. Your main eyepiece with a diopter just to adjust the optics. Your two main lenses. You've got your firing button and your power button and your mode just to cycle through meters, yardages. If we can go and look just inside, see if I can get it to highlight. There we go. So you've got a, there we go. You've got a green and red display on this one. You see the little uh, target in there. We've got the pre-production model, so this one just mainly focuses on distance measuring rather than some of the other internal features. But that can be changed to black if you so wish. You've also got a mode for if you're out playing in mist or any fog, it just adjust the way the laser fires, just to give you a more accurate reading. It does fit nicely in the hand, just fits around like you know the part of your palm. So yeah, it does feel quite nice. I say that optic does look very clear when you're outside as well. All right, that's good, feels good. Should we get it out of there? Have a little bit of a test. Okay, so you've just seen Neil do the unboxing. Now, before we pop over to Morgan Port, where Neil and I played some holes the other week, and uh, we got a little chance to try out the rangefinder, this is it here in my hand. Now, I've got quite large hands, it's a substantial piece of kit. I don't mean by that that it's large. I mean, it's, it just feels really lovely and strong and just fits on my hand beautifully. I'm currently using the PF1, which I've said, which is a smaller waterproof version. 
which is which is a great piece of kit. Um, and I use that because I can stick it in my pocket easy. But I do find that with my hands, it's sometimes a little bit tiny and finding the couple of buttons is a bit tricky. So this just, just works for me, okay? Now, th I've said, this is the premium priced Miles E rangefinder at this moment. There are various other ones coming out, which we hopefully will be showcasing too. Uh, looking on the website today, as of Monday the 13th of May, 2024, if you wanna check this later on in life, uh, the rangefinder in the UK is £326 on their website, okay? So let's pop over to Morgan Porf and see what we think. Right, Neil, so we're on the par three, number five at Morgan Porf. Yeah, should we give it a zap? Give it a zap. 121. 121. Quick to lock on. I've got to say, clarity-wise, it's so clear looking through that lens. You've got the adjustable diopter, so I can adjust it for my eye, you can adjust it for yours, obviously, with your glasses. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Okay, so straight away, for me, this has to be key. Clarity through this, using my glasses, is just fantastic. I have not used such a clear rangefinder, and I've used various different companies than this, okay? Now, it's got the adjustable dial here, which will change different people's vision, okay? And that, again, great for me. Means that I can hand this to Neil. Neil can use it, he can hand it back, okay? So that's the first really good thing for me. Also, it's got a, I think it's seven, seven and a half degree wide angle of view in this, which that's just amazing. It literally feels like the whole of your vision is in through this. Does that make sense? Do you understand that? feels like the whole place is in that one little lens. You're not trying to find a tiny little point of moving it around. You can see the whole area. And so you can very easily lock on to where you need to go. So you said about the clarity. Yeah. So in the viewfinder, we've got different colors now. We do, yeah. So on this, you've got like a little green crosshair with a red circle in the middle. Okay. And your lighting is red as well. The, the digits come up in red as well. So it's yeah. pretty clear against the blue sky. Sometimes the black ones fade to a little that, bit that's of That's what I find, obviously. I said I've got a few eyesight problems at times. And I must admit, I've used this one a yeah. couple of times on a course now myself. And I'm very impressed. Very impressed with that clarity. Yeah. And like I said, as clear with all the numbers and the details that you need to know. That's it. And also, with the slope on, it gives you a degree of decline or incline as well. Yep. So apparently it's one degree. It's, it's pretty flat, it's is what I will flat. say. Okay, so a couple of things that Neil discussed there. This is the, as I said, pre-production version. So it's currently got a, uh, a green and kind of red uh, detailing inside it. But the one you get in the shops now has an all red or an all black version on the fonts and the display. For me, that's brilliant because I've often struggled with the ones that are just black, especially on a gray day. Uh, but with this, I've said so much brighter. The display is so much brighter. Um, it just works, it just works. What a great idea. Give you the opportunity to switch from one display color to another, depending on the conditions of the course and the weather. Let's go and hit that ball. Let's hit one down. Very good, well done. 121. 121. Oh, I'll just drift a bit right now. Yeah. But it would be 121. Does it up your putting though, mate? No, no, no. Sorry, Neil, I had to put the putt in at the end, didn't I? Now, obviously Neil's a much better player than me. He's a you know, what, high single figure, eight, nine. So his accuracy to green is so much better than mine. However, I picked the right iron that I needed. And even though I was over on the right, I managed to chip onto the green and uh, managed to get least nearish to the flag in a couple of shots. That's the plan. Rangefinders help you with your distance because guessing is just not the thing to do. So many times I've gone and played old school golf on the channel just for a bit of fun with no rangefinder at all and you haven't 
any idea of the distances. You're kind of guessing and then you look round and find out one of those old marker points and find that you're totally wrong. Okay, so especially if you kind of know the distances of all your clubs, the kind of averages that you'll be using, this is why a rangefinder is key. Now I'm very quickly going to give you a couple of the specs from the page because obviously I think people would need to see that, that's important. So like I've said, you've got a 7.5 degree field of view. That's what I was trying to explain, field of view. Magnification is times six, which is brilliant. And uh, well, it, yes, it's got a slope switch. Now, as Nils already described a couple of times, here's your slope switch on here. Okay, hope you can see that. Hopefully it's gonna pick it up. Uh, it's just a simple flick down, flick up for on. Okay, dead easy to do. And obviously you can't use that in competition, but hey, if you're out practicing, or even if it's just your home course and you're just, just having a fun round, make use of that slope all the time because you never know when you go on a day when you have to take part in a proper comp, you will already kind of know those differences. Write them down maybe. You know, write down those slopes and work out the differences. Nothing wrong with taking a bit of statistics with you and working things out. It's all in the detail. So you don't have to just use rangefinders to find the distance to a pin on a hole. You can also use it to find distance to hazards, trees, etc. The 18th here at Morgan Porth, we've got a tree on the right-hand side of the fairway. Now I want to know how far away that tree is so that I'm not putting myself in any danger of hitting a shot close to it. So if you cut to the tee, we'll now take a reading from the tee to the tree. I now know that tree is 208 yards away, so I can pick a club that's either not going to put me underneath that directly, or one that can go past or shorter, depends on how I want to play my second shot into the green. So I've got a club now that I know won't get me underneath that tree, it's going to get me past the tree. So we'll hit the shot down. So you can use the rangefinder to make it beneficial on course. Thanks for that, Neil. It's almost like I've got him there live at the course. Miracle of editing, eh? So the other thing I found out about this, when you look at all their details, and obviously all different companies have all their specs about their rangefinders, they say on this, you can do a flag lock from 450 yards away. Now, I'm never gonna need a flag lock from 450 yards away, not in my level. Um, I'm not Bryson DeChambeau, okay? So I gave it a test anyway. Now, Morgan Port, there was a, there's a couple of holes that are pretty straight, pretty narrow, um, but you can see the flag. So this is about a 430 odd shot from the tee. Need to get it accurately. Within seconds, I had locked onto the flag 432 yards away. It wasn't even the best weather day, to be honest, just to show you can lock on very quickly. It's also got a vibration, which I must admit, I don't pick up that strongly with my hands, but uh, there's also a vibration when it locks on. Great. So we've had this for a couple of weeks now or more and I had a chance to go and try it out on the course a few times just playing golf and uh, on Friday we went out to St Austell Golf Club um, and we found out something else about this. So Neil, we're here at St Austell Golf Club today where we've been taking part in a charity event. So this is the quiet part of the place. We're at the range at the moment. It's the only cool part as the well. The only cool part. Of the sun is out today. Beautiful day. Uh, there's a little bit of the Marzi rangefinder review that he wanted to explain that we haven't had a chance to use yet. No, no. Uh, we can just find out about it. It's a brilliant yeah. little bit of kit. It's, it's quite handy. Um, in a nutshell, when you're firing at different targets, you don't have to keep release, releasing the button and repressing it. You can just hold it down and scan between the different, um, different targets you want to shoot at. So, I mean, for example, out in front of me, we're at the range here. So we've got a net, we've got the two posts to the left. I can hold it up, fire once, and it will give me 68 yards, keep it held scanned, 74 yards, 95 yards. It just saves you putting it up, shoot, let go, you can just keep it scanning. It's, saves you thinking. Yeah. It's, it it's just saves thinking. a lot of time. And on a course you could use it, I know, for example, if you're aiming at the green and you've got a bunker in front, you want to measure to the front, to the lip of the bunker, and then to the pin. And then maybe a bunker on the other side as well. So you can just go between the targets without them to release. You can keep it held and just track your eye 
and away you go. Very good little it's bit so of It's so quick as well. Very good. So, that's it. The PFS2 Rangefinder by Milesy Golf. I like it. £326 at the moment. Take a look at their shop if you're interested. I'll also give you a link below for the shop and for the Amazon website so you can take a look yourself. If you see me on a course, um, this will be on my bag because I'm going to be using this instead of the PF1 purely because it fits in my hand better and I feel I can see a little bit better out of it with my eye issues because of the brightness and the clarity. But guess what's why I'm paying about another £100 more. If you love us doing these kind of reviews, let us know. We've got lots of other products we're going to be showing you. But I just think it's quite a good idea. As I said, I find reviews are totally personal. So I'm not going to go, this is the best thing on the planet. This is worse. This is whatever. That's not what we do. We'll show you them. You get a chance to see me on a course or around and I've got these products on me. You can have a go yourself. That's the best way. But for now, I will say... I'm loving this one. Thanks for Milesy for sending this. And when we get the new one, with all the bells and whistles in it, we'll do a full showcase of that too. Speak soon, everybody. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.